and some of the local people, the uh, CERT Colorado Evolution Response Team, Mike Antlin in the biology department at CSU is a member, uh, with doing stuff like that. But then after the Kitzmiller versus Dover trial in 2005, <coughs> it was kind of quieted down for a long time, and it seemed like we didn't really have anything much going on here in terms of creationism or intelligent design or anything else wacko. Mm -hmm. Until last fall, uh, the Denver Post published an article on a Flat Earth group meeting in Fort Collins. <laughs> and there was a certain amount of like, wait, who are these people? Where did they come from? What's going on? And it's like, and I thought, well, wait, they're only meeting a couple miles from my house. I'll just go check them out. <laughs> you know? So um, it was sort of like uh, what, Anais Nin titled one of her books, A Spy in the House of Love. So. <laughs> You know, I'll just, I'll just sneak in there and kind of see what's going on. So, um, they were meeting at the Purple Cup Cafe over oh, in Griffin Gaines. Oh, yes. you know, there, mm -hmm. one of the back rooms. Um, I showed up, and there were about this many people, which is a little scary if you're looking at that as a balance where you'd like this to be the heavy side. Um, <laughs> about 15 people, but they weren't all flat earthers, because I was one of the 15. There was a reporter from an Italian newspaper who had been on assignment for something else in Colorado and got redirected there to report on this amazing, wacky American phenomenon. Um, and I think there was one other person who was maybe there just to, to check them out. But um, it's really hard to describe the set of beliefs that these people have because there were a whole bunch of different ones. And, it was like a Venn diagram where the overlap was flat earth. Um, the oldest guy there was sort of a traditional young earth creationist, and he believed that the earth was flat because the Bible said it was so, and therefore it must be. Um, another younger guy there was basically, I think his core beliefs was uh, sort of UFO conspiracy stuff. And he thought that the Earth had to be flat because the flying saucers were coming from underneath it. I mean, we see they're not coming from outer space, right? So how do they get here? Right? Makes so just, it's obvious the Earth has to be flat and they have to be hiding under it. Um, one guy who's, who, who helped organize the meeting and was very, um, very vocal a lot it was very hard to pin him down. He had a lot of conspiracy theory-like beliefs that were all sort of loosely interlinked. Uh, he was a 9-11 truther. He was um, fluoridation and uh, chemtrails. And something about, uh, it was really hard to understand, but it was something about skylight and it was being controlled and that it wasn't true that like the blue from the sky was scattered sunlight, it was really something else. And, uh, Construction paper. <laughs> Construction you know, paper. And then there were some people who were quieter and it's hard to know what they believed, but they were just there kind of soaking it up. Um, and the thing that really kind of got to me was, you know, I was going in there as like, well, gee, whether the earth is flat or not, that's, a, that's an empirical question. Mm -hmm. We can test that, right? We can go find out whether that's true or not. You, I mean, if it's really true, you should go out and just prove it. And they're all going, oh, no, that would be too expensive. <laughs> and I'm going like, dude, there's this 8 and 10-year-old pair of sisters who have sent three balloon missions into space already, have, have been at the White House Science Fair, and, you know, I mean, they've been over to like 110,000 feet. You know, and they're like kids, right? How can you tell me this is too hard? So I'm not too, too hard. It's like, well, where, look, if the Earth is flat, it has to have an edge, right? So, yeah, it yeah. So, so, where's the edge? It's Antarctica. So, just go there and take a picture of the edge. No, the military won't let us get anywhere near there. <laughs> and I'm totally, you know, so just like, it, it became clear after so much time that they just, they don't want to test their beliefs. They know they're right, and they don't need to test their beliefs, right? And that's the way they look at it. And so that was just kind of frustrating, and I left kind of frustrated, but I thought, i got to give this another try. So I went back the next week. The reporter wasn't there. Uh, it was a somewhat different crowd. There was a, 
family with young kids. That was really the saddest thing oh. I saw there, was there were like four to six year old kids who were sitting there soaking all this stuff up and their parents were like nodding. <laughs> and, uh, and about two thirds through the meeting, my brain just started to melt. I just, I, you know, I felt like I was rubbing my head against a moving sand belt and, and like it, it had gotten into the brain. I, I just had to get up and leave. So I really only attended one and two thirds meetings. I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, I guess the good news is I don't think those people are very dangerous. They don't seem to be angling for a lot of publicity or trying to convert a lot of other people. Um, and I think the fact that they got some publicity in the Denver Post was kind of a fluke. And it uh, it has gone away for the moment, but um, you know, if we hear anything else, I'm on the front lines. <laughs> I, will, I will put my tinfoil helmet back on and you go in there. So, um, and as far as I know, there's still meeting. I think it's on Tuesday nights, and so if any of you want to get your brains melted, uh, that's, a, that's a place to go, and it's sort of cheaper than psychedelic drugs. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Did they have anything to say about that guy with the Wile E. Coyote rocket? I had that in my slideshow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think, no, I don't think they talked about it. They did have a bunch of videos. Um, these were things they had pulled off of YouTube and other sites, and they were running constantly in the background. Oh, but sure some of them were Flat Earth related, and some of them were just other wacko stuff, and so it was kind of yeah. hard to... It was kind of hard to tell who they were trying to convince of what. Yeah, I mean, yeah, my whole thing is, you know, he, yeah, he's going through all the trouble of building this rocket. I keep asking, why don't you just buy a plane ticket? It's less yeah. expensive and you're less likely to damage yourself and you'll go higher. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, there's lots of ways to yeah. test whether yeah. the Earth looks round, at least. Right? Yeah, I mean, right. just even shadows. If you're in, if you're in Louisiana, you go out on Lake Pontchartrain, yeah. yeah. and, and the lake is big enough that you can't see the other shore because there's just enough curvature. Yeah. Um, does all this go back to the Bible? That's the reason? No, I think for some of them it does. I'd say maybe I mean, a third of them. Like, where does it come from? Like, I mean, the Bible doesn't yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Let's say when Jeebus died, like he well, rose up from the earth and he couldn't, like, with the earth is round, he couldn't, like, exactly rise up, so it had to be flat, so he could get rocked. Oh, so, one of the that makes sense. I'm converted now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the I things believe. is sort of the bad I believe. You know, where it says that the sun stopped, so the sun can't stop unless the earth is the fixed center of the universe mm -hmm. and the sun's going around it, right? So that would argue for that. That's one of the places. It's also um, a story where they. Acoustic weaponry, is it not? Yes, oh, they, yeah. did. Uh, yes. they did. Yes. They, they blew their horns so loud that the balls came Yeah, they stole that from Dune. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think you went to that meeting before, just before that guy built the rocket. Though. Yeah. It was, that was know, recent. It was maybe a week or two after the. Um, story came out in the post, so oh. whatever that was, I don't remember. Yeah, because then it was a little while before it uh, got the rocket. Uh, Craig Foster mentioned uh, the National Conference for Flat Earthers. Is that going to be in Colorado? They're not going to fly. No? In November? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's something that you could Google walk and figure out. Yeah, yeah, I just wondered if you heard it. Um, what about the hollow earthers? Were they any there? They have any theories on the hollow earth? And did they duke it out if fight, anybody showed up? Fight, fight, fight! Yeah. <laughs> I haven't. No. I well. I mean, they're just as equally crazy. I didn't see any specific hollow earthers there. Um, the last time I've seen any hollow earth activity is that the the sequel to the movie Iron Sky. Features the Earth being hollow uh, and full of Nazis and dinosaurs. Um, well, that's where they went. Yeah. Um, well, Nazis riding dinosaurs. Sky features Nazis on the dark side of the moon. They went there in 1945 and have been waiting to come back. So um, I think that's a big yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Um, if you want a stupid movie, um, let's see. They, but they have conflicting beliefs, like you said, and I don't understand how they can... I mean, like some people, the flat earthers, think there's a globe, like a snow globe, with little patches of, of light that are showing through, and that it's, it's like a glo globe. 
<laughs> and they think that that's, and it's covered in ice all the way around. And I mean, how do you have a competing? The thing is, it's, it's kind of amorphous. Sometimes when you poke at like one particular theory, you, then it, it shifts a little, right? And now you're a little off target. It just, some of these things are very squishy. It's not clear that they're really like, sort of like, belief systems that consist of interconnected logical ideas. It's more like an emotional feeling that certain things are being lied about. Or, um, like the guy who had the, all the theories, including one about the skylight being something other than what we think it is, um, I tried to talk to him about um, if you have like Polaroid sunglasses and you look at the sky 90 degrees away from the sun, so like if the sun is there, you look here. And then you tilt your glasses around, you will see it at, at some angle of your glasses, you'll see a dark band in the sky, a dark ring that's 90 degrees away from the sun. And the reason is that the light at that angle is polarized. And so you can block it out if you get your glasses at the right angle. And the reason it's polarized is that light is a transverse wave. Right? Sound is a longitudinal wave. Sound goes in the direction of the wave. Light is a sideways wave. And so what's happening is the light from the sun comes to here, and it's going either up and down or, or, or this way, right? But it's going perpendicular to the direction of travel. And if it scatters from here, the stuff that's going sideways cannot scatter toward you because that vibration would then have to be a longitudinal wave that's going <coughs> in and out instead of sideways. So the only thing that can scatter is the part that's going up and down, and that can bounce, and it can be going up and down toward you, but then it's perfectly um, polarized. You probably lost them, huh? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I put some real science in there. Yeah. <laughs> that's just fake but news. the point is, is fake news. anybody with a pair of Polaroid sunglasses can just go outside on a clear day and see. It's just there, right? And it's... I won't say it proves that the sun is the source of the blue light in the sky, but it's consistent with the idea that the sun is the source of the blue light in the sky. And his theory, whatever it was, wouldn't have predicted that that band is there. So I told him, just get some sunglasses. He didn't even want to do that experiment. Right? That's too, That's too difficult. too expensive, <laughs> too hard, or it might challenge my beliefs. <laughs> That's <laughs> more than answer. Yeah. At any rate, so... Um, it was painful, but it was like, yes. Uh, my other question is, I'm really interested in where did this come from? Do you have any in, in insight in, as to why we weren't thinking about flat earth and then all of a sudden everybody's talking about flat earth? Was it like a, an incident? In, I, I'm trying to wonder, was there a rapper or a actor or somebody who came out and started talking about it and then all of a sudden that became back in our news? I don't, I want, I'm interested I in that know. instant of where it was nothing and then it was something, like the universe. Locally, these guys just put out a feeler on Craigslist or Facebook or something and they got a few people interested and then they just made it a regular thing. Right. And eventually somebody else heard about it and thought, oh, that'll be a fun story and just, you know. <laughs> So, I mean, I mean, the right thing to do, I think, for a lot of this is just ignore, ignore them. Right? <laughs> if you can. Be, go, be, if you I say anything so. about it, you're just, just giving them free publicity. Yeah. That's right. Stop talking about, about the flat earthers. Yeah. The flat earthers. Just yeah. try not yeah. to think of a flat earthers. Yeah, don't talk about the flat earthers <laughs> that are in Colorado <laughs> meeting on Tuesday nights. I think there was a famous uh, online battle between a rapper and Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. Uh, Yes. So it's Neil's fault, huh? It could be. <laughs> so did all, these people, did all these people seem sincere? Or you get the impression some of them might have been like trolling? Or it's a social group. Right? Oh. Or kind of high, maybe? <laughs> I, I don't think there was anyone there that looked obviously like they were faking it. So I, but, I ran a similar press an online discussion of it once, and I, I said, hmm. Half people here are trolls and half of them are idiots. Yeah, but it's... <laughs> That's a good proposal. There's this kind of concept in, in creationism of the big tent that you want to phrase creationism in such a way that the maximum number of people can accept it, Is more or less. And so, like, uh, you know, the Discovery Institute spent a lot of time trying to sort of optimize their intelligent design story <coughs> so that it was palatable to the maximum number of believers. Um, 
And I feel like what's happening is that there aren't enough flat earthers for them to all be really picky about exactly which flat earth theory there is, because then they would all be in meetings of one person. <laughs> right? And so, even though they each have sincere beliefs and are coming from some particular background or framework, um, in order to have enough of them together to actually be able to sit in a room and talk about stuff, they kind of have to tolerate the different flavors. Um, and I guess that's healthy uh, because it means that no, no one of those things is really getting dominant or snowballing. That's true. Um, but yeah, it was kind of strange. <laughs> and it was kind of strange to see that, yes, it's happened. I mean, I can think it's going to happen in Colorado. That wouldn't shock me. But, like, does it have to happen here? You know, because it happens here, then it's sort of on, it's on my watch, right? Yeah. And I have to go check it out. So, I think the uh, Flat Earth Conference for 2018 is going to be in Alberta. So. Oh, Ooh, I'm going there in a couple weeks. I'm speaking in Alberta. <laughs> no, Ed when is it? Edmonton. That's Edmonton. Albuquerque. Oh, well, I'm going. Never mind. I'm going to Alberta. Canada. <laughs> Same thing. I'm tired. I don't know. Start with an A. Lots of vowels. <laughs> Alberta. <laughs> Alberta. 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 And night is God pulling sackcloth over the sun, and it has been holes in it, and that's the start. Turtles all the way down. <laughs> and don't forget the Mandela effect. Mandela, uh, yeah. yeah. They talked about that a lot, actually. <laughs> they did? Uh, yeah. I can't, um, get, I can't understand. Uh, well, no, well, I, one thing I forgot was that uh, the guy with all the theories, one of them was uh, Man Mandela effect stuff, which is basically that... Um, Large numbers of people misremember history in exactly the same way. That's right. Oh, like that yeah. Nelson Mandela died in prison. Oh. Right. There are hundreds of thousands of people who, who either believe that or believe that they heard that somewhere, so, even though it's totally not true. Which um, they have on Facebook. But this guy, <laughs> he thought that the reason this was true is that there are multiple parallel realities. That's so right. was, that was another one of his theories. There's <laughs> you know, many worlds theory of quantum mechanics. We've got all these parallel universes going along together. And every once in a while, people pop from one into the next one over. And the stuff you remember from your universe isn't right anymore. That's not right. all of it. Right? So it's, it's kind of like the game Chrononauts. If, if you've ever played that. You're in, in Chrononauts, everybody's playing time travelers, mm -hmm. and you have a timeline in front of you, which is our normal timeline for this world. And the problem is, it's not your timeline. In your world, Lincoln was never assassinated. You know, In your world, the Lusitania didn't sink, and so World War I never happened, or the US didn't get into it, or, right? So, you have to like fix the timeline, right? So, so he had this theory that, that he had already popped universes a couple of times, and that was why he remembered things that weren't true. So, very so, so, so he, so he's a literal, a literal Rick and Morty character. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> I at least know who that is because my kid watches it. Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> but I, I have a question because you seem to understand the Mandela effect more than I can. I just can't get my head around it because, for example. I had this one kind of a troll guy, and he was sending me emails consistently for five months, and he was really, he's, you got to look at this one. And it was like, so they removed the dash from Coca-Cola. And I said, that's just advertising. Over the years, they'll change uh, SpaghettiOs. They'll make the O a little smaller or something. Go, no, 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 it's a different reality. And I said, yeah, it's a different reality, but it's still... <coughs> It's just advertising. I mean, it seems so logically, like, how could you think that way? So, did, did this guy think that products change because he jumped out of it, or that reality came into our... Anyway, I just... Well, I mean... <laughs> I can't, I don't get it. You know, if you're looking for it, you can see it all over the place. I mean, just... We things could say, change. for example, that a lot of the people who believe some of the things Trump says are real yeah. are 
they misbelieve what our reality is, right? Like right. that there was a huge number of people at his inauguration. That's right. I mean, yeah. right? We have photos that say that wasn't true, yeah, right. but they believe it's true. So, well, it's but it's so not a testable effect. Universe. No. So I'm going to end here. I'm going to end with a joke. Why did the White House install a new phone line? I don't know why. To get to the other side. Facts. <laughs> oh, that was awful. Bad. Very good.